Hey, how are you doing? Welcome to a brief vlog about what I have been working on for the past 20 days or so since my last video where I talked about creating an engine to hopefully build my game with it. The next step was to add the ability to load 3D models so I could start working on BBR shaders and lighting. However, there was something I had been delaying for a long time, which is adding an editor. I kept delaying it because I was focused on other systems, but I realized this was the right time to implement it before the engine become more complex. An editor would make development much easier compared to editing the scene through code, even for simple things like moving an object or something. So I started working on it. And naturally of course I used the one and only Dear Amgui. Amgui is in my opinion the gold standard for creating editors, UI debuggers or any interactive development user interface. That said, integrating it into my engine wasn't straightforward for several reasons. The first reason is multi-threading. Vanguard, my engine, is multi-threaded, with a main thread and a rendering thread. However, Amgui is not thread safe, and it is somewhat well known that getting Amgui to work in a multi-threaded environment can be tricky. The second challenge was that Amgui is API agnostic meaning it requires integration with the rendering API of your application. My engine uses two APIs, DirectX 12 and Vulkan. The complication here is that these APIs aren't directly managed by my engine. They are handled by Forge, which acts as the rendering abstraction layer, abstracting the low-level implementations for both APIs. To integrate Amgui, I had to work with Forge, which of course wasn't written by me. Forge does have its own Amgui implementation, but it is kinda outdated and limited. It doesn't support multi-viewports or docking, as it is primarily meant for debug overlays, not for fully customized editors. To achieve more control and advanced UI functionality, I had to implement the latest version of Amgui myself. Anyway, I will not go too deep into the technical details of how I did it, or how much time it took, or how many issues I fixed, because videos like that take time and I need to get back to work. But briefly, it was not as bad as I expected. Even the multi-treating part was relatively easy to handle. The real challenge, the real pain, was getting multi-viewports to work. At first, of course, it was not working because it was not enabled. But after enabling it, it was crashing whenever I dragged a viewport out of the main window. Eventually, it stopped crashing, but the dragged viewport rendered nothing and turned black. After more debugging, it rendered something, but the colors were completely off. So yeah, I had to fix too many issues with that multi-viewport stuff. Thankfully, I got everything working in the end, and after that I started building the editor itself. And after a few days of work, here is the results. And here is the red editor, if you will, although nothing here is red. Uh, I don't know where I come up with my names, but it is what it is. Uh, of course, it is very basic, it is very very bare bones, but it is ready to be expanded and add whatever features I might need in the future. So here is the usual layout you see in any game engine editor. You have a hierarchy, the world viewports, the playground which is like the game view in Unity, and you have the inspector. You can drag any viewport and place it wherever you want. The editor is very customizable in terms of layout. Or you can move it out entirely to become its own window if you like. In the hierarchy you can create new entities. For now we can just create primitives, so we will create a cube. And you can move in the world viewport to change the view of the editor camera. But of course that will not affect the playground because it renders the real game camera. You know, normal stuff. In the hierarchy you can rename your entities. And you can also parent objects to other objects. Of course, if you then change the transform of the parent, it will affect the children's transform as well. You can move the position, rotate, scale, all of the usual stuff. And of course, you can unparent the entity at any time, and it will no longer be affected by the parent's transformation. So, yeah, that is the current progress, as you can see. As I said, it is still very basic in terms of features, and many things are not implemented yet. Like the search for example, it is just there, it does not do anything. But one more thing that I have added is this environment setting panel here, which you can use it to change some rendering settings. None of them work of course, but they will become very handy when we start making some real graphics. But you can change the environment map, also known as the skybox.
those are pre-compressed cube maps I still need to add the ability to select and show all the six faces in this panel so I can see and change each one of them as I like but uh, this is what we have at the moment so yeah so yeah I guess that is pretty much everything thanks for watching don't forget to join my discord server also if you want to support whatever the hell I'm doing check my patreon page in the description below and that is it boys see you